guys, welcome back to part five of the KK Complete Guide. Today we're talking about a very requested subject. I know my buddies down in the US Virgin Islands have been waiting for this one. This is tricopters. Now, I got this guy. This is the uh, Hobby King X900 tricopter. Uh, it comes in this convenient, very small box, small box, big copter. Um, kind of awesome, uh, with a very easy to follow exploded diagram for building. Now, there were some complaints about the build process and stuff when people were talking to me in the comments and online. Uh, the only real thing you have to do with this guy is make sure when you're building it that you assemble these feet, hook the springs on, then mount the motor mount, then mount the foot. If you do it in that order, everything goes together without any other real issues, and I didn't have any other problems building this thing. Uh, if you really wanted to spend the time, you could drill a few small holes and route all of your cables through the booms, which would be very slick. Um, but I really just wanted to uh, get it together and get it flying. So I did that. Uh, folds up, which is cool. When you unfold it, it actually becomes kind of a massive copter. Um, but that giant size is really cool. It also makes it really, really stable. I'm gonna go into some of the specifics for uh, tricopter tuning, things that are different on the KK board that are specific to tries. Uh, I'm gonna flip this thing around so that Jose can see what's going on. And I'm gonna plug the battery in now. This copter, uh, because I didn't use the power distribution board from Hobby King, I have wired my voltage sensor on the KK board as well as my LEDs to the balance tab on the battery. If I don't plug that in, it will sit here and yell at us because it will think the voltage is low. There we go. So now the board wakes up. Now, with a tricopter, we're gonna do the same settings that we've done or the same thing we've done in the past. We're gonna go into the board, we're gonna go down and select the load motor layout, load the tricopter, then we're going to calibrate our accelerometer. So I'm gonna assume you've already done those two things. From there with the tri, the most important thing that you have to do next is go in and check uh, your receiver test and make sure that your receiver is receiving all of the uh, correct signals from the radio. Left is left, right is right, all of that. And then we're gonna go down to the mixer editor. And this is very specific to the try. So we're going to slide over to channel number four in the mixer editor. And that's the servo channel. We're gonna do two things. We're gonna check and make sure that the offset is correct. The offset is the centering of the servo. When we turn the copter on and arm it, we want that servo to go level. And the other thing we need to check uh, is the rudder setting on here and make sure that the tail servo is actually moving in the right direction. Most of the time, it's not. It ends up being reversed. So we have to check that first so that when you take off, the copter's not flying like crazy. Uh, so we're gonna check that real quick. I'm gonna take the props off and show you how that works. Oh, we wanna make sure that when we yaw the copter left and right, that the servo goes in the right direction. Otherwise, all kinds of craziness will ensue when you first try to take off. Uh, as I said, go into the mixer editor and go down to channel four. That's what will actually make the change for this. The way to figure out what's going on is take your props off, go ahead and arm your copter. Now, first of all, like I said, we wanna check and make sure that that servo goes centered in the rear and that that tail rotor ends up flat when you are on the copter. If you're gonna adjust that uh, on Mixer Editor 4 with uh, the position uh, setting, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but, in the meantime, arm the copter and, and give it a little bit of throttle and move your tail servo left and right. Your, tail, your servo, your prop, should move opposite the direction of your stick. Okay, that's the best part of drag office is the fact that that moves around, but it should move opposite your stick that moves the same direction as your rudder stick when you're standing behind the copter, then it's gonna be going the wrong way and we need to reverse it in the mixer editor. To do that, we'll disarm our copter here, come over to our mixer editor, and we'll go through to channel four, and what we're gonna adjust is where it says rudder. Now, I've got this correctly adjusted to minus 100. The default setting is 100. So when you first load this thing, that tail servo is going the wrong way. Now that's because some tricopters, the servo is above the, the motor, some it's below. It has to do with how it's being actuated and you're always gonna have to check it. So do that first. The other thing you wanna check is this offset. Now I have this set at 57. The default is 50. Mine was a little bit off center. So I went to 57 and that got dotted in. So that's it. Then you've got your servo moving in the right direction. Now the other important thing to do when you first fly it with the props on is to go 
up here to miscellaneous settings. And right here at the bottom, there's a magic little number called servo filter. That's really important. When you first take off with a lot of tricopters, depending on what servo combination you've used in the back, you'll get all this jib. The servo just goes, gee, 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 gee. It goes crazy, it gets very hot. Um, that'll happen when you first take off. If you've got that happening, immediately land the copter, this arm, come in here and increase that servo filter number. You're just gonna keep cranking that up until the servo stops jittering, and then you're good to go. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like too, but it's kind of sketchy. So yeah, I'll put the props back on it. I'm gonna show you what the servo filter looks like. I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about yaw tuning for the tricopter, and then it's time to do some real flying. I've gone in and I've set the servo filtering down to zero so that you can see uh, this twitching in the servo that I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm gonna arm this thing and uh, just give it a little bit of throttle here. Not even come off the ground. You can start to see the tail servo gets very nervous start switching around. Speak louder. So, that's what happens if you don't have the servo filtering on, is it twitches around, it gets kind of weird. And also, you can't tell on video, but the servo gets quite warm. Uh, so you go in to MISC settings, as I said, basically just keep increasing that servo filtering a few notches at a time until that goes away. On this copter, I needed about 50, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. ended up around 70, so that should be a good setting, and we will leave that where it is. Now, the thing flies really, really well on the default tricopter firmware, so I got lucky with this guy uh, and didn't have to do a whole lot of tuning, but I am gonna show you guys a couple of quick notes on how to tune yaw, as promised on PID, and uh, then we're gonna go uh, strap some GoPro on this thing and see what kind of footage we can get. Guys, I've gone in and set this thing to have really bad yaw characteristics, but unfortunately, because this is a really easy copter to tune uh, and a very stable copter, it's not really performing that badly. But I am gonna take off here and show you uh, what to expect when the, when the yaw tuning is wrong. Now, what I've done is set the P very high to 105, and the I is off, there's no I on yaw. What that does with the copter is it makes it very snappy when it changes direction, but it also won't really hold its yaw, because there's no eye, and it wants to uh, change altitude as you're yawing left and right. It has a hard time maintaining altitude while making yaw changes. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and show you what that looks like right now, and then I'll set it back where it should be and show you how much better it flies. As you can see, it's kind of rotating counterclockwise. I'm not doing that, I have to hold an input keep it from yawing. If I give it throttle, it yaws. It won't hold still. And the other thing is, if I make yaw changes, as you can see, I have to give it a lot of throttle to hold altitude. It's having trouble doing that on its own. Both of those are characteristics of too much P and not enough I on your yaw setting. So when you're tuning your yaw PID, basically you add P, turn the yaw eye off, and add P until the copter wants to hunt when you're changing direction and then back off a little and then add the eye until that wandering sensation that desire to turn just goes away so we've ended up with a p gain of 75 a p limit of 20 an i gain of 50 uh, and an i limit of 10 on our yaw setting that makes this copter fly really really well I'll show you that right now That's hands off, no changes, no weirdness. Really, really stable. This is self level turned on. That's self level turned off. You can see, still very, very stable. That's hands free, self level off. Really, just a piece of cake.
Now the other thing about this copter that I noticed almost immediately was it's giant and it has lots of space for a camera. So it lent itself almost immediately to uh, either FPV or GoPro use. I haven't put an FPV transmitter on it yet, but I have hung a camera on it. We're gonna go out to the airstrip, do some proper flying, and uh, show you what that looks like. So come along. No autofocus. Away to the camera, down a bit. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Take <laughs> so we don't get a whole lot better than that. This is a really good copter. Again, uh, strongly recommend the X900 try. Strongly recommend tries in general. Really, not much more to say. Enjoy it. See you next time. Okay. I like pickles and loitos. Taco taco burrito burrito. <laughs> taco flavor cheeses. Somebody opens the gate. Uh, wait, just look at me. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a game. <laughs>